Hello, future millionaires, and welcome back to the Get Rich Slow podcast. We're your hosts, Adrian Shermer, Rob Delavan, and today we have Sue Hort with us for some more tax fun. Good afternoon, and welcome, Sue. Thanks. Tax fun. I serve that up. Fun. You bet it. <laughs> Um, all, today all day, is every day, huh? <laughs> part seven, <laughs> every day. Uh, part seven in an eight-part series. We're nearing uh, the end, which makes me sad. Um, not the end of tax season, though, because that seems to be, gosh, thanks to COVID, I guess that just bleeds all the way through the year at this point, right? Like, it's just a constant. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So and we're going to uh, talk about that. Throw an yes. extension in and you're there. You're, you're two years out. Um, so today's episode, it's, it's about year-end tax planning. So we've talked a bit, um, and, and I mean, most people attack their taxes, right, from a what happened before kind of standpoint. And I think a big message that we're trying to push here is that you can plan ahead and you can make differences in how you're going to operate. Um, and it can save you a considerable pile of money. It can save you from silly mistakes. I personally have made plenty of silly mistakes. I've gotten enormous tax returns before, aka I gave a interest-free loan to the government. Um, here's how mm -hmm. we can help you dial in what your situation is um, so that you're not lending the government money, um, even though that tax return can feel really good at the end of the year. Um, that's what you've done. You've, you've let them hold on to your money um, without right. interest. So um, right. Rob. Okay. Well, uh, before we dive too deep into that, uh, upcoming events, please go to roi-fa.com backslash events. Uh, we have a full list of this year. And actually, I think we're starting to do next year's. Um, on our website, uh, we have, of course, roa-fa.com, uh, delavan-realty.com, and directorsmortgage.net. Uh, just search up Adrian Shermer just Google uh, me. and go from there. And from then there. Sue, our wonderful uh, uh, co-host for this short series, is at roi-tax.com. And Lance has seen clients today, so we'll do our best to make sure that we we keep uh, keep this thing spirit. moving. So okay. seven in an eight part series. We're getting close, like you said. And the last episode, of course, we got some of our questions answered in regards to real estate and taxes. I think we just barely scratched the surface, yeah. but it was something. And uh, now we're going to just jump into this tax planning conversation. Okay, so um, Sue Yort, our yes. trusted CPA and trustworthy all-around person. <laughs> uh, and so you're in tax planning and why it's important. So let's start out with just the time element. When's the best time to begin year-end tax planning, Sue? Ah, trick question. Tax planning is a year-round event. So we start during tax season because that's when I see people, I'll see or talk to everyone in one way or another. And so we've got um, you know, your current year taxes going on and we might be able to see some places that we could possibly do things for the last year. But most importantly, we're looking forward to what can we do different for this year to help this client. Right. So we'll start by saying, okay, let's um, make you an S corp or you started a new business and we want to look at how you're doing. So I'll plan out with my client to let's touch base in July. Let's touch base in um, October. And if we need to December to see how they're doing, mm -hmm. to make, see what income is doing. Should we do more in estimated payments? Have they done better or worse? Um, just various things or their investments. How have investments been going this year? Are they, they have a lot of, of capital gains? Let's harvest some losses. You know, we've got the tax planning and it should be all year round, some check-ins. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then in that process, are they continuously providing you information or updates or year-to-date books? How, what's that look like? Most definitely. So uh, they're providing me information throughout the year. So 
we've got that first year, I've run a business client. Mm -hmm. And I tell them, yes, I can give you estimates. We'll start out with something, but I need to talk to you, say, in July or August, Mm -hmm. um, because there's an estimate coming in September. So I want to see how the first six months went. Mm -hmm. And then Mm -hmm. I want to talk again in October or November to see how we're doing towards the end of the year. So they've got to provide me some of those books. So they need to have a bookkeeper or be doing Mm -hmm. bookkeeping. And then the same if maybe it's rental properties or investments. Did they sell a property? Did they um, buy one? Um, did they? Are they doing a 1031 exchange? I'm going to need some up-to-date things regarding all that so I can make and help them make those decisions. This is uh, seriously, the, in my opinion, it is the coolest part of, of using a CPA. Uh, you know, I've got anecdote after anecdote of this. Uh, Sue, I think we were just working with someone where um, uh, uh, some parents were going to be gifting potentially equity in a property as they moved it from. And there's all these questions. What are the implications of that? What what portion of that from a tax perspective is a gift? And I can't tell you the answer to it on this podcast because it would be different for everybody. It wouldn't be fair mm-hmm. for me to say, oh, do it this way, um, because it just depended on what did the parents make? What did the kids make? What are their sources of income? Um, And I know, at least if I'm going to throw an anecdote under the bus, it's when my wife started her business, you helped us slide all the expenses into the correct year. And it saved us literally thousands and thousands of dollars. I think we we broke 10,000 in how much money was saved because of the consequence of what we were able to write off. So um, yeah, planning. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's all those kind of things that make it important that we're doing that planning. And um, I, you know, there is a charge for uh, tax planning anywhere between mm-hmm. seven hundred and fifty and twelve hundred. It depends on what kind of um, work you have involved um, and what's going on. But how many thousands that I can save you in taxes because of this planning, just like Adrian's talking about, mm-hmm. you know, is, um, is, is priceless, I guess. Yeah. I mean, there is a price, but um, <laughs> yeah, but and it's, it's, it's well yeah. over a thousand dollars that you would pay me right. to help you throughout the year to do this. Right. And so, and that's what I want to do. That's one of my core values. I want to help people so that they don't feel so in the dark and so overwhelmed and afraid of taxes. Mm -hmm. And this is the way to do it. And we get things set up. You know, you start with one year, but it takes about three to five years to kind of get on a good, smooth plan. So, Mm. mm -hmm. Well, and what's, I mean, we always have to remember everybody's results are going to be different, whether Mm -hmm. it be, you know, Adrian and his family versus, uh, you know, and uh, what, what do they say in the financial world? Past results are no guarantee of future results. Um, or something of that effect. Uh, with, with that being the case, you're talking about a serious time savings when it comes to actual tax season, because taxes are basically all but done by the end of the year um, is one piece. So there's no scramble in May, or I'm sorry, April 13th to try to get things done by, you know, it just, it's just not the case. And then of course, uh, if and when it does happen occasionally where somebody says, oh, should I be doing tax planning? And their situation's super simple. The first thing you're probably going to say, Sue, I, I just, just because I know how you run your business <laughs> is you, know, you take a quick look and you're going, um, actually, uh, no, I, this really isn't for you. I mean, you're a W-2 employee that, you, you know, just, it, it's very simple. You don't need tax planning. It's not worth the, the costs that I'm going to charge you. But for most people, that's generally not the case. So. That's correct. Right. I mean, if you go anything beyond, I own a house and have two kids, say mm-hmm. to rentals or even investments, or, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm going to throw out this one. I was helping a family member and they have way too much withholding because mm-hmm. the first year I did it, they were under withheld and they were so upset that they had to pay. So mm-hmm. they went totally the opposite direction. So mm-hmm. I've been helping them now with, um, you know, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, bless you. I've been helping them dial it back mm-hmm. and then, t- you know, doing things like, well, look, you could put money into a backdoor Roth and you could do um, more to the 401k and various things. Maybe you do a Roth and a um, 401k, you know, um, a combo. So 
there is some things to be added to people, even if they're W-2, but that's right. if they're making good money and they're interested in retirement and savings mm -hmm. and how to not give the government a loan. Right, so. yeah. So uh, the last question for you uh, on this topic, Sue, is do you have any recommendations on systems to keep your paperwork and filings in order so that That's you can so do this time efficiently? So there's a lot of different ways and it depends on the individual. So you've got some, I'll say, people younger than me <laughs> who <laughs> might be more into the apps or the online. Um, mm -hmm. There's various, um, everything from apps to on the computer that you can scan in and save tax documents. And um, so I think we might even, you know, have a couple of those links um, at the end of this. Pretty impressive uh, software. It's getting better every year too. But that is for sure. I mm -hmm. had somebody tell me they could scan it in and it automatically went into their business expenses, mm. like to like directly onto a financial statement. Wow. So I had to kind of tell them, well, that's great, but you've also got your bank feeding into your financial statement information right. and you could be double counting. So sure. that's where we have to kind of have a conversation about right. that kind of thing. Right. But in addition, you know, there's the good old fashioned paper filing. And, um, but what's most important is I tell people, you know, have your this year file where you're putting in, uh, you know, receipts or documents right. or something like that. And then once you get the tax return from me and you're all finished, then you package up the tax return with those receipts if you have paper copies mm -hmm. and um, put it in the tax box somewhere. Right. I mean, there's a possibility you might need it someday, um, especially when people ask me, what do I save? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I say seven years only because I have to save seven years and mm. I know there's a reason and right. they can only go back three years and audit. But if you file late, they go back three years from the time you actually filed. Mm -hmm. And sometimes <clears throat> if they audit and they find something, they go back farther. Mm. So, and I think Oregon can go farther than federal. And so that's why I just say, you know, rather mm -hmm. than three or five, I just say seven. Okay. And the only documents that you would keep older than that is if you wanted to keep your um, house purchase or house sale. Oh. Most important would be house purchase, really. Mm -hmm. right. But um, yeah, you know, there's the old fashioned file where you just put everything in. I also tell people if they've got a house and they do remodels and improvements, mm. have a house file that rolls forward every year yeah. because there's been a lot of people in this past year who sold their house and they'd been there 20 years, yeah. you know, 25 years. Uh, they can't exempt the whole game. They can right. exempt up to half a million, but right. there's people I've had with a million or 2 million. Mm -hmm. uh, there's people who have a farm in particular, I'm thinking mm -hmm. of. So you've got to have all those improvements to add on to your basis. Right. I could go on, but I don't know how much you want me to go on. <laughs> There's always more. That's one fun thing about this. There's always another, another layer to unpack, but uh, we'll only go so deep on this one. Okay, so uh, the final thoughts here, Sue, obviously is, is pick some systems, go with it, and uh, you got to plan ahead. That's, that's, uh, and tax planning is incredibly valuable. Uh, yeah. That reminds me of one of my favorite quotes: "The system, mm. the best system, is the system you use." Ah, uh, there you go. That that makes sense. Got it. You um, got to do something. So, speaking of systems we use, uh, the best way to find Sue is to visit her at her website at www.roi-tax.com. That yep. will be linked in the show notes along with our disclosures. Um, I think you, Sue, you had a few links to um, some different articles on ways to save. Or, ways to, or to get organized, organized yeah and how to thing. save things and like adrian says everybody's a little different right. and whatever works for them i can i can use yeah <laughs> and and then so in our final episode so this was number seven um our next one and final one is uh episode eight and eight part series and we'll be learning about why your financial advisor and your cpa should be working hand in hand 
Yes. Um, so that's it for today. Thank you both. Uh, a special thank you to Sue for being here during tax season. You bet. And uh, you only have about a month left. So keep up the good work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take care, everybody. Thank you.